Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today's the day to enjoy new Necron models. So I have assembled and brought together all of the new models that are currently, um, that have just come out in the year 2020. Uh, the Indominus ones are all painted. Uh, they've already been primed with a gloss black followed by a uh, metal color magnesium by Vallejo and uh, so you can distinguish the two of them from those who have just been freshly assembled as they are brand new models some of which are coming out today um, and we're just going to have a look through them all of the most fresh models I'm going to chat about how it was to how it was to build them and um, we'll also have a look at well I'll have a glance at their data sheet um, but mostly it's to look at the model itself uh, in 3D as the pictures don't necessarily show them off to their best. These are quite complex models and uh, I hope you enjoy looking at them with me. <laughs> I'm going to go through each one individually and chat about the model and how it was to assemble and what extra pieces are and and that sort of thing and probably pop up the data sheet as we're going as well so you can have a look at that. I won't really talk about all the stats on the data sheet but you'll be able to see it anyway to get an idea of what it's like yourself. Necrons has Necrons have changed with the uh, new codex out and uh, yeah, so you're gonna have to check it out, see what you like. We've got the Convergence of Dominion, the three-piece terrain uh, in the back. Uh, we've got the tall uh, Canoptic Doom Stalker and the still fairly tall Canoptic Reanimator. Uh, we've got the Scorpic Lord, the Locust Heavy Destroyer, our little Hexmark, uh, Hexmark Destroyer. Uh, we've got our new Ophidian Destroyers. I've got the new Illuminar Zarus, uh, we've got our Plasmancer and Cryptothralls, we've got a single little Necron Warrior and um, the Necron Scarabs and the Royal Warden, the new Overlord, just aesthetically different, Scorpec Destroyers and Plasmacite, oh yes and the little Plasmacite with the Ophidian Destroyers. We've got the shard of the Void Dragon, uh, the Silent King there in the back, and the new monolith. And those are the models that I'll be just running through on. So I hope you enjoy. All right, so these guys were super easy to put together. If, uh, if you want someone to get into the game and help you build terrain or build models, well, these, these are great ones for it. Um, they are literally four pieces each. That's it. You, you have these two pieces that you put together uh, and you've got these additional pieces for here. It, it would fit on this one as well. So these pieces I think actually were meant to go on this one but I wanted to change it up and put it on this piece instead. So this piece is super straightforward. It's nice and sturdy. It, it's not going to be falling over. It's super sturdy. You can fit any of these pieces together with any of the other pieces. I put it together as it suggested, which is this piece with that piece, this more destroyed piece with that piece, and the two more complete ones together. You use up the entire sprue on this one. The only extra piece that I had from this kit is this. That's it. And yeah, I think these look really nice and I very much enjoy how sturdy they are. They um, they can be thrown around a bit. I really like how the fact um, that Games Workshop allows your terrain to be well used. And do you see all these details? Look at all these details. These are, these are going to be really nice to paint. Scorpic Lord, lovely piece. Uh, this one came out of Indominus. Looks awesome, doesn't it? It's quite the piece. Next, we have this guy 
All right, so he is actually quite straightforward to put together. Um, there, there were no extra pieces. You used all of them, but he was very straightforward to put together. I kind of expected, I don't, I don't know why, but I kind of expected him to be more difficult, but no, no, very straightforward to put together. Didn't have difficulty with him at all and didn't experience any warp in the legs or anything like that. He was great. This is the Locust Heavy Destroyer and he came with a different weapon option and a different head and a couple different extra pieces that you could apply. Uh, this is like push fit so there's holes that you can um, fill. I'll just show you. So he, here are the extra pieces that he has. So just an extra weapon option and as I said a skull and a little rock with the scarab crawling about it. Uh, I did do one adjustment. His gun wants to go point downward. I thought that was kind of silly so I cut a little bit off of his um, middle part so that he uh, is actually shooting his gun forward rather than pointing it downward. But other than that, it's exactly as you expected out of the box. This one is the Canoptic Reanimator. Again, out of Indomitus. Another straightforward piece to put together. I like him. I uh, I very much enjoy these long-legged guys. It looks very alien. Kind of reminds me of War of the Worlds, something like that. And um, I, I like this added really nasty alien look to the Necrons. I think it will be great for new players to get into it with these really cool pieces. This is a Plasmancer also from Indominus and he's just, look at him, I just very much enjoy his arm pointing. I mean he's, he kind of reminds me of an old guy going, what's that? But really you know he's just obliterating worlds. His two little henchmen, the Cryptothralls, are cute horrifying little creatures aren't they? That's what he's sending off into battle, right? So this fellow is the new Hexmark Destroyer with his six arms. Those were a bit fiddly to get on, but not bad at all. Everything fit quite well. And as you can see, he is a destroyer, so the little plasma sites can fit in there and give him an energy boost, right? Oh, um, his extra pieces were an additional head and a piece of terrain that I didn't think was necessary to add to his base. I'll show you those. I chose this head, but there was also the option of the head that you'd see on the box. more of a circular one with respect to the eyes and then a cool piece of terrain. There's a lot going on with him so I didn't add the terrain piece um, but yeah that terrain piece goes on his base. These guys are the Scorpec destroyers with plasmacite. They are super straightforward to put together and they do come in three different variants but my one of them is has wandered off so here's my third guy. Uh, these particular ones again came from Indominus and also come with their plasma site. This is what he looks like up close.
Right, and the Ophidian destroyers, which absolutely look like the very, very old metal race before they turned into the race that's up on the monolith that we'll see shortly. Um, these absolutely look like the really, really old fashioned race, except for they've added some swords, or axes, blades. So that's interesting. Interesting that they went back to this style. Pretty cool. Uh, they come in three variants. Uh, very straightforward to put together. You've got a bit of leeway on how you put the arms on um, because it's square inserts for the most part. So you've got some leeway. And of course, if you round out the inserts, then you can, uh, you can put them easily whichever way you want to, to form their arms. Of course, this way is very specific, but hey, it's a tail. Not certain why, they, there really isn't much of a difference at all between them, but they had three extra heads for some reason, so cool. Uh, they also come with their own plasma site, which is different. Uh, same creature, of course, but it is a different model than the Indominus plasma site, just by how it's oriented. Uh, here's the uh, Indominus Overlord which you can also get from one or two of the starter sets. As you can see, I, I started painting him. The Royal Warden, also from Indominus, and also available in one of the starter sets. Here is one Necron Warrior uh, using one of the two guns that they come with, the Push Fit Indominus Necron warriors aren't the funnest to put together. I mean, they're straightforward, but you kind of have to like bend their arms. So if you haven't worked on these push fit Necron warriors, don't be surprised if you have to bend their arms and shove that head on. And then we got our new little scarabs, which, you know, are a nice swarm of scarabs. We've got seven scarabs now. The new and improved Illuminor Zarus. It's quite in his lore to keep getting bigger and better as he's working towards ascendancy by killing everything, killing everything, bringing it to the lab and experimenting on it. Uh, and of course, taking the life force out of anyone who happens to be standing too close. He works for the Silent King just so that he can get new bodies. Here we have the Shard of the Void Dragon and it is a lovely piece. It really is. It may be one that you want to leave at home rather than take to tournaments. <laughs> um, it is as fiddly as you think it is. <laughs> so this was actually a fun little puzzle to put together. Uh, you get two extra pieces because there's two different uh, heads that you can put on. And even this variant has a second little swirly thing that you can put in there instead of the onk. Uh, this is really nice piece. Such a well sculpted model. He's gorgeous. And this, these, all these pieces are so cool uh, as well. I mean, you could use that, just these alone before you add him. You add him uh, basically last. You build up from the bottom and uh, build up until you add him finally. And it looks really nice right before you add him as well. And he even looks good without wings. I mean, look at those, look at those wings. I can see kit bashes coming out of this where you may use him as a different sort of um, a, a different sort of Catan and just steal the wings for someone else and steal all of this rock bits. 
I mean, these, this is a really cool model. Look at that weapon. That weapon is really nice too. So pretty, simple and so pretty. All right, I'll just show you the alternate pieces. I mean, uh, also, um, like this piece here is connected to uh, these, these wavy bits, uh, but you could, you could keep this little creepy fellow on his back off if you wanted. And it would look fine. I think there might, uh, if I remember correctly, there's a little hole that attaches him to this fellow. Uh, but it'd be easy enough to fill it in so he'd have, he'd just lose this part and he'd be by himself. It's not a difficult thing to do if you want to get rid of a bit of the creepy thing that's on the, his back. <laughs> Two extra pieces that you get with him are, again, a swirly bit, which could take the place of the ankh in the center. And a helmet. Full helm. The monolith. So this is definitely a different beast from the previous monolith. Yes, it has similarities, but it is so, so much more complex. So much so that um, you really want to not assemble it fully until after you've painted it. It has so much going on. Okay. Including this fellow. A very interesting piece. So, okay, oh, what should I say first? Um, there are two different weapon options. All right, so we've got these guns versus these guns. We've got mobility here, so, uh, and as you can see, it fits just fine. So don't glue it in because you got some nice mobility. Four extra of these guys. T two extra random pieces because there's a, um, a duplicate mold and you only need two of these, so you get two extra. And you get an extra gate. You have the option of either having a gate with a Necron Warrior through or a gate without a Necron Warrior through. Uh, so that you've got a nice extra piece either way. You've got a cool gate to put on some piece of terrain, which is really cool. This allows you to tilt your monolith in different fashions. It's an interesting fly base. <laughs> okay, first answer to your questions. So there's your wraith. That's what he would, he looked like. Um, and he attaches to this piece. This piece is actually tied into this part of the monolith. It's one solid piece, so can you take the wraith off? Uh, not really. This piece is extra, and this piece is extra, but all of this piece is one solid piece of plastic. So if you wanted to not have the wraith on your monolith, then it, it would look like that. I mean, which is not bad, but it would look like that. So I'm afraid you're kind of forced, unless you want to do some work, to have this interesting styled wraith on your monolith. Well, now you can see that it's tilted. Let's straighten it up again. There we go. Straight. All right. Put you back there and we'll assemble you shortly. Okay. So, uh, these are mirrored pieces. So I'm just going to show you what one of them is like. As you can see, the inside is pretty complex and you can see right through it. So you can take these out if you don't glue them in anyway, you can take these out to do something special with them. Probably airbrush or glow effects or something like that. Well, airbrush glow effects on them and, and then pop them in after you've done painting them. As I said, you can see right through 
to the inside. See how the inside is also organized. Uh, so you may want to paint the inside as well as the outside of the monolith. Now, if you wanted more terrain pieces, you could just take them out and uh, put it together cheatingly. I wonder, see, you just take these guys out and go, I'm going to make a little monolith out of them. Little terrain pieces out of them and I'll just put it back together and... Uh, one second, fit them back in there. Yeah. Show you what it looks like if you have those pieces in there or if you don't have those pieces in there. Alright, so uh, you got a bit more of a see-through monolith. If you don't have the inside pieces in there, but as you can see, you can totally see the inside of this monolith. So if you're going to, uh, you may want to paint it in a sub-assembly fashion. There was a touch of warp on this monolith piece, so you may definitely want to get yourself some reverse tweezers uh, so that you can hold pieces together that want to try and warp a bit. Uh, and prevent that warp from happening as they dry. It's a beautiful model though. So much going on, so intense. It's a project to put it together. And again, we got an extra, extra guy. Pretty cool. All right, that's the monolith. All right, lastly, we have the Silent King. And he is a lovely model, so much detail. He is actually, uh, this kit is the best thing I've ever seen for kit bashing Necron pieces. Okay, so you've got these two things, which are pretty cool, right? And they're also, they're very straightforward to put together. Um, now, for sub-assembly, you definitely want to keep him separate. So he's separate, the Silent King. And his cloak is separate, because that's going to take some work all by himself. Uh, and just look at that. You've got a beautiful little fellow and a really nice weapon uh, and pieces that don't necessarily, like his, his little robes part and his little helmet. Uh, you can ch change up with that, his little back, it, it's, uh, it's a really well done model. And look at this cloak, I mean, who doesn't want that kind of really neat cloak? Give that to a character. It's lovely. And we've got our two, his right hand man and his left hand man, which would make great characters themselves. I mean, they certainly look like a plasmaster by themselves. One of those um, mancers that aren't out yet. Here's one fellow. So they do have the, this piece that connects them on back to that sort of coffin looking place. But with a little bit of um, a little bit of adjustment, you can absolutely make it his own model of his little hand. So his hand is supposed to be like at rest underneath. Um, but it just fits so nicely that you can, he, he was just so excited for the combat that he's, he's reaching out and grabbing hold of the banister to look at it. Uh, technically, I think his, his hand is supposed to be like lower down at his, at his side in rest, but he had to grab the banister and take a look at things. Uh, he, he's a very aggressive fellow. Um, there is some, <laughs> so of course there is, there is uh, one putting this together, oh my goodness. It does assemble really well, very straightforward, takes some time, uh, but each piece goes together really nicely. Um, he was pretty straightforward to put together for a Necron. The only thing these, uh, oh, there is one thing, his, his legs um, on the sprue, 
one leg is seven and eight and the other leg is nine and ten uh, but in the book their numbers are rearranged so that's just you know a little thing to think about and these fellows when you're assembling them they basically have your head going on last which i think was actually a terrible idea um you want to put their his head on before you add his arms and you probably want to add the staff at the end that is a much better way to put it together i think um you because there's there's these little bar rods that come up to meet his head and they're much harder to meet if his head isn't already there so i found that i want to put the head on first then put on his arms and then when everything is done you attach the staff so that you can so he's already standing up and you can orient it the way that you want to orient it so i would definitely switch that around for when it comes to assembly put their heads on first then their arms so that you can um, make these rods attach to their head properly their little neck rods and and then attach their um, staffs last so that you can orient it properly um, once he can stand up by himself is to make really lovely pieces by themselves and you just need a little bit of work there if you <laughs> care about the fact that they were once attached to the silent king's throne <laughs> So, and, okay, now I'm going to show you why this is, like, the best kit bashing thing ever. Okay, let's see. We've got fancy Necron stairs and fancy Necron diases. Look at that. And whirly bits. And these, these four, oh, and tiny little scarabs that, I don't know where they went, but there's two little scarabs that, you know, are just hanging out somewhere. Um... And we've got these four Necron legs and all of these, all of them, I'm going to, uh, and this big spike and these two other spikes. And look at these mechadendrite things. I mean, if you're thinking possibly ad mech, uh, look at these guys and more spikes. And I mean, him up top freaking out. There's, and these little pieces, there's so many pieces to this model, by the way. There's, I think, 200 pieces or so to this model. And they are, there's so many balls and trinkets and wires and everything is so absolutely detailed. I mean, someone put so much effort into this model. It's gorgeous. So, so many conversions. So many kit bashes there's just so much going on in this model it's intense and gorgeous and look at look at that little dais i mean that's that's really cute it's just there's so much going on here it's just lovely all oh, right and uh no there aren't any extra pieces for this model there's these this this is here's here's the extra pieces for this model <laughs> A couple scarabs. <laughs> um, of course, you could not put probably ha put half of what's up there on. There's there's so many ways that you can change it. Um, but as as the book says, this is these are only, these are your only extras. It's cute. Just hanging out. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed viewing these models with me. As you can see, they are some really, really well detailed models. That is the thing about Games Workshop is that their models are so detailed. Oh, and if you want an idea of how to paint your Necrons, well, I have got the video right up there where I paint Necrons. Yes, you should prime your Necrons first before painting them, but that was a challenge to myself. Um, but I've got a video up there um, about painting Necrons, and in the comments are all the various ways people have thought of painting their Necrons. So if you want to check out their com the comments, uh, the sky is the limit. For necrons and you should have great fun with them thanks for watching bye thank you guys